Before we start this video, a large thank you to Krog, Yuchin, Bart, and D for their support on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Halo Burner for their immense support to the channel this month on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the video, my friend. Hello, everybody. I don't know about you, but I'm really sick of switching my weapon through the player manager script. So let's do something about that in this video. We're going to make it so we can switch our left and right weapons. I'm just going to start by copying the game object that contains the stat bars. And I'm going to delete everything from the inside of it. I'm just using it as a reference for the size, really. I'm going to delete the vertical layout group and I'm going to rename it to quick slots. So this is gonna house our uh, left and right weapon and our spell slot and our quick item slot. I'm gonna bind it to the bottom left of the UI using the anchor point, so it's always on the bottom left of the screen. And then I'm gonna create a new empty game object. I'm gonna call this spell and, hmm, I guess I could just call it spell and item slot. So we'll call it that. Um, I'm going to expand it to the entire size of quick slots by using stretch so it always keeps the same proportions and i'm going to add a vertical layout group I'm going to put it on middle center okay so i'm going to duplicate this object now i'm going to call uh, left and right or just weapon slots if you want to if you prefer I'm going to delete the vertical layout group and instead add a horizontal layout group also in middle center so this is going to basically organize our quick slots for us so they make that t shape right away Next, I'm going to start by adding a UI element to the weapon slots. I'm going to call this slot, and I'm going to make the size, um, I believe it's 2 by 3. So it'll be 100 by 150, something like that. As long as it's like, you know, um, that ratio, 66% by 99%, uh, that's about the size I believe that Elden and Dark Souls uses. Maybe I'm mistaken, though. So I'm going to add another image to that slot. Uh, I'm going to stretch it the full size of the slot's background. I'm going to call this item icon, and I'm going to just disable that image for now. So next, I'm going to duplicate this, um, and I'm going to just basically make another one. Actually, you know, let's make this to a prefab. So if we want to change it down the road, one change affects all four. So let's go to the prefabs folder, make a new folder for UI prefabs, and I'm just going to drag in this slot. But first, I'm going to name it something that's a bit different so it's easy to understand uh, quick slots UI that's pretty straightforward and now I'll drag that in here so now I'm going to rename this one specifically though to left or right weapon slot so let's duplicate it to make two the first one I'll call left weapon slot and then the next one I'll call right weapon quick slots and we're going to add UI like that keyword to that too just so we can kind of remember that this is definitely using the same uh, prefab quick slot UI. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to copy and paste both of these up top and change the names from right and left weapon quick slot UI uh, to spell or spell item quick slot UI, whichever you prefer, and just item quick slot UI. I guess you could say uh, consumable item, but they're not always consumable. They could be tools. So now that that's done, I'm going to actually modify these organizers a little bit. So let's start by going up to the vertical layout group under spell and item slot. Let's actually make the spacing say uh, negative 100 looks pretty good. All right, now let's go to the horizontal layout group here. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna untick child force expand and give it spacings. This makes them stick together. I'm just gonna give this some spacing. So we'll say 100. 125, yeah, 125 looks good. I'm gonna go back to the other one now and do the same. I'm gonna untick Child Force Expand. Instead of taking away spacing, I'm gonna give it spacing. And I think, uh, let's try 25. 25 looks really good. So now we have an auto-organizing UI. So it makes a nice little T there, just like Elden Ring and Dark Souls. So let's open up the Player UI Manager. But first, before I go, actually, I'm just gonna modify the prefab here a little bit because I think this is a little, tiny bit too big for our UI. You can see our stat bars look very small in comparison, so. I'm just gonna do that real quick here, and then I'll just jump back. I'll try like, yeah, so I set it on 80 by 120, by the way, and I'm also gonna resize the quick slots parent object here. You can see the, the other objects here stay in the center, and I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller and put it kind of like down towards the bottom left of the screen more. Uh, I'm gonna save, and then the player UI manager looks good. So let's jump over to the player UI HUD manager script. I'm gonna make a header called stat bars here for our stat bars because we're gonna add some more stuff now gonna make another header for quick slots. So this is gonna be the quick slot icons specifically. I'm gonna make a serializable field. We're gonna say using Unity Engine 
dot UI up top because we need to say that to use the image variable field. And then I'm going to call this right weapon quick slot icon. I'm going to copy that now and do the same thing, but I'm going to change right to left for the left weapon quick slot icon. Now let's make a function or two to actually change these icons. So public void set right weapon quick slot icon. And I'm going to describe a couple ways we can do this, okay? Because there's two ways and both are equally valid. So method one, we directly reference the right weapon in the hand of the player. Pros, it's super straightforward. Cons, if you forget to call this function after you load your weapons first, it will give you an error. An example of this is maybe through some way you load your game, you're trying to load your UI, uh, and you don't remember to call it after you've already loaded your player's weapons. So that would give you an error. So this method is fine. Just remember your order of operations. The second method is to require an item ID and use that ID to get the weapon from our weapon item database and then get the icon from there. Basically, we're already saving which weapon we have currently equipped in our right and left hands when we save our game. So this just uses that ID directly from there and not from the player's hand. So if you call this first before loading your player's weapons, it's perfectly fine. Again, this is a weird case. I just like being really um, hyper-specific in these instances because you might trip up and forget this and then not know why your weapon is not loading or what's happening. So we're going to use method two because this is just one less thing to remember in terms of order of operations. Again, both are perfectly valid. There's nothing that's really better than the other here. I just have a preference with two. Both will give you the same result. So feel free to use one if you want. It's a lot more simple. So let's make this require a weapon ID under uh, a variable of an int. And we're going to first check to see that if the world item database dot get weapon by ID is equal to null, then we're going to disable or uh, yeah, disable the image specifically. So right weapon quick slot icon dot enable is equal to false, not the game object. And then we're going to say right weapon quick slot icon dot sprite is equal to null. And then we're going to return. So if it's not null, then we can proceed. And if it's not null, we're going to actually pass along the image. But let's start by making a local variable here for the weapon item. We're going to say weapon is equal to, and then we're going to get it from the database. And then instead of checking the database, we're going to simply say if the weapon is equal to null. All right. So moving on, if the weapon is not null, we then need to also check to see if the weapon has an item icon. And if the weapon's item icon, for example, unarmed equals null, and all we do is just do the same thing and return. Let's just throw a debug log message here in both these cases, just in case we run any problems. Also, it's worth noting that when you actually do the final build of your game, you should get rid of all the debug messages because they do actually eat up a lot of um, memory when you're actually testing out builds. Uh, so every time you fire one of these in the console on a build, it's actually gonna cost you a whole lot. I learned from experience, but right now while you're developing it, it's not important at all. Just when you actually do builds, remember to get rid of these. So down here, we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to make it a debug log up top here too, saying if the weapon is null, we're just going to say the item is null as a warning. We shouldn't get that one though. And then if you want to check to where you can meet the requirements of the weapon, you know how there's that little warning icon? If you can't, it's like a red X. This is where you would do that. And then you would enable that image. We're not going to do that right now because that's totally a polished thing. We can circle back around to that when we actually enable uh, weapon requirements and we're further along. So this is where we're going to do that in the future. Now, if you pass all the checks, then we're going to enable the icon, but only after we've set the sprite from the weapon. So we're going to say the right weapon quick slot icon dot sprite is equal to weapon item icon. And then we're going to say right weapon dot enabled, uh, right weapon quick slot icon dot enabled is equal to true. And then we can copy all of this and paste it for the left weapon, change the word right to left. Now, take your time when you do this because you're going to be doing this a bit more in the future too. I can't tell you how many times I've copied a function for the right hand uh, and made it for the left. And I've forgotten one line of code where I left right weapon as right weapon instead of changing it to left. And we'll just break everything. And you might not notice it for a while. So it's very insidious. So I'm just going to copy this now and paste that and go back over into the project. Let's open up the player manager script for a moment. If we go down to on network spawn, you can see here we have a function we call every time we change the right weapon ID. This is perfect. So now if we go over to on current right hand weapon ID change, what we can do is say if player is owner, 
So we're only calling this if the local player is running this function. Then we're going to simply reference the player UI manager singleton by saying player UI manager instance. Then we'll reference our HUD manager and then we'll say set right weapon quick slot icon and we pass our new ID. That's it. Now we do the same thing for our left weapon. So down here on current left hand weapon ID change. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing. Now, I believe we actually didn't set up switching left hand weapons previously. So we're gonna do that in this video as well. We're just gonna copy and paste what we already have for the right weapon. So it's gonna be very straightforward. Let's go to the inputs now. Let's make two new inputs. We're going to make one for switching the right and switching the left weapon. So I'm just gonna copy or duplicate rather RB. I'm gonna call it switch right weapon and I'm gonna change it to D pad right. That will be my input. And then I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm going to uh, do the same thing, but use D-pad left. I'm gonna drag it down here also, so it's down next to seek left and right lock on target. So if you guys know how to set up the inputs now, and you know where to go from here, I would urge you to pause the video and go do this yourself. It is the best way to learn. Um, if you feel comfortable actually setting everything up from here on out, just, just give it a try on your own, and if you mess up or you're lost, come back on pause the video. And if you wanna keep going, that's cool too. We're just gonna save the inputs now and go over to the player input manager. So let's open that up. And let's go down to the enable and let's do everything we normally do. Oh, first we actually have to create the inputs. So let's do that. So I can make a header down here for D-pad and I'm thinking about it actually. Switching a weapon is technically an action. So we're just gonna put that under the player action input. So right under jump input, I'm gonna put that there. Let's make two, one for your right weapon, sometimes autocomplete works, sometimes it doesn't. So copy and paste to your last field, bull. Switch underscore right underscore weapon underscore input is equal to false. Do the same thing now for the left weapon input. Excellent. And now we go down to on enable and we can set this up. So I'm going to put this right under jump and dodge input. I'm gonna give this a header and then call it actions. And then I'm going to say player controls dot player actions dot switch right weapon dot performed plus equals I equals greater than switch right weapon input equals true. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my left hand input here, except switch right becomes switch left and switch right input becomes switch left input. All right, cool. Now down here, I'm gonna copy one of these random input functions and delete everything inside of it, just so I can kind of move a little bit quicker. And then I'm gonna change handle RB input to handle switch right weapon input. Inside, I'm gonna say if switch right weapon input, then we're gonna say switch right weapon input is equal to false. And then we're gonna simply call upon our player dot player equipment manager dot switch right weapon. And that's it. We made that a few videos ago now. Let's do the same thing, but do it for our switch left. So switch right, we can switch left. Switch right input becomes switch left input. And then we say switch left input is equal to false. And then we say player dot player equipment manager switch left weapon. Now let's call both of these functions under handle all inputs. So we were actually checking for the input being pressed. And then we're almost ready to test it in game. We just gotta actually do a couple more things like drag in our item icons or our equipment icons. So under the HUD manager, we need the left and right weapon icon. I'm actually gonna delete our debug menu here too in the player manager because that was for switching our weapons. I believe we're reviving. So I'm gonna delete that from update and I'm gonna delete the variables up here on top. Um, I don't need this anymore. If you wanna keep it there, that's totally fine. I'm just not gonna use it. So I'm gonna remove that. All right, now I'm gonna go over to the player UI manager prefab, go to the HUD manager and drag in the left and right weapon item icons. Make sure you put them in the correct place, left and left and the right and right. All right, now I'm gonna save this. There we go. Now I'm gonna go into the game here, press play. And if I switch my weapon, there you go. You see the icon actually switches, but there's a small bug you might've noticed. When we switch our weapon, we can run suddenly faster and our walking is faster too. Why is that? And if I roll it resets, that's because we're accidentally turning on apply root motion. And then our walking cycle, we get the regular movement speed. And then we get the running speed two of our walking cycle on top of the root motion from the actual animation. So you can see here, apply root motion is handled by a script. So this is a pretty straightforward fix. We're actually 
accidentally enabling it here under switch right weapon. If we go over here, you can see bool is performing action and bool apply root motion. So make sure you change the bool for applying root motion to false, because what happens here is it never actually uh, goes back to the empty state on our action command. So our root motion never turns off. And since we're running around after we switch our weapon, because it's only happening on the upper body, you get the root motion movement of the uh, walking cycle and then the movement of our character controller when we're walking. So it combines making move faster. Next, let's copy and paste everything under switch right weapon and paste it to our switch left weapon function because this is empty. And just go around here and change every single word to from right here to left. And I urge you to use control F and check it when you're done because there is a lot of references here to both the right index and the current right hand weapon. So it's very easy to miss one of these. So again, make sure you're very thorough. Use control F and search after. Okay, next let's copy and paste our switch right weapon animation. And uh, this is under the upper body override. I'm gonna change it to swap left weapon. And all I'm gonna do is mirror the regular animation by ticking this little mirror checkbox and it will work fine. Make a transition back to upper body empty and we're good to go. I'm gonna make sure the transition exit time is the same as the right hand weapon. So it matches, which is 0.9 in my case. And now I'm going to go back because I've made a mistake and I forgot to switch the right weapon here. Uh, I forgot to change it to switch to left. And this is on my player input manager. Just wanted to come back here and show you how easy that is to do. So I'm going to save that. Now if I go back into the game and I switch my right hand weapon, there you go. There's the item icon. I switch my left. There you go. There's the item icon. And it is working as intended. So now, guys, there you go. You have a way to switch your weapons and you have an item icon displaying that. So we got a little bit of HUD happening here now. And also, if any of you had that bug that I was experiencing before where you were moving a lot faster, now you know where to look out for it if it happens again. Basically, you don't want to apply root motion on animations that don't need it. For example, if we're switching our um, weapons, this is an upper body thing, so we don't need to do that. And if you are applying root motion to an animation that's upper body, make sure you set up a reset state when it goes back to upper body empty so you're disabling it. Otherwise, you'll keep the root motion movement of your walk and run cycle while also applying the speed and movement of our uh, walking and run speed settings on the character controller and that will make you move faster. So as always guys, thank you for being here with me. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you all have a lovely weekend and I hope you learned something new. I will see you all next week where we're gonna do weapon combos.